Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going over the debate on fine line and micro tattoos. This has been a huge topic of conversation in the tattoo community in the past few months, so I thought we would dive deep and go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. And by ugly, I do not mean the tattoos. So Inked Magazine recently came out with a video called Think Twice Before Getting a Micro Tattoo, where they interviewed tattoo artist John Mesa and he spoke at length about his disdain for these type of tattoos. I'll have the video linked below if you want to check out the full thing, but I'm going to break down what I think are the most important parts for this argument. Pretty much right off the bat, John Mesa says that micro tattoo artists are selling snake oil. And essentially what this means is that they're deceiving their customers. They're selling something under a facade. And I think that that's what his point is, that a lot of the clients coming and getting micro tattoos don't know that the healing and the aging process of these tattoos are different from traditional tattooing. That's also his assumption and he goes on with this assumption saying that tattoo artists who do micro tattoos have a responsibility to their clients to inform them about the aging process of these tattoos and the fact that in John's eyes, most of them aren't gonna look as good in a few years. I think what John Mesa is saying in the first minute of this video is valid. He talks about his experience tattooing and seeing pigments change over time, seeing small lades, lades, seeing small lines fade over time and seeing the degradation of white ink as well. That's just his personal experience tattooing and he's been doing this for a long time. So I do think that his points are really valid up until one minute. After one minute, he pretty quickly crosses the line in my opinion, but let's go into it. This teardrop tattoo is the first tattoo John talked about, and this tattoo is done by Niu Niu Wu, who is a tattoo artist based in Beijing, China, who tattoos at the new tattoo studio in Beijing. So John does acknowledge that there's a huge amount of skill and artistry in this tattoo, but he immediately says that it's a bunch of magic tricks and photography tricks that made this image what it is. And his reasoning for that is the blurring of the background. Personally, I don't think that's enough evidence to say that this artist is photoshopping their tattoos, but I guess that's just his opinion. One thing he said about this tattoo that really bothered me is that he said that this tattoo artist has no respect for the roles of tattooing, when in actuality, this tattoo was done by the artist on the tattoo artist's own ankle, and they posted a story of them doing this to themselves. Old school tattoo artists always say that you should tattoo on yourself before you tattoo clients, so you know how it feels, you know how it ages, and you can get a better understanding of what you're doing before you do it on other people. Now, Nunu is tattooing on other people, but to say that this tattoo has no respect for the rules of tattooing because of the fact that it's a new style and there's a lot of intricate detail in it, I think is really out of line, especially since they did it on themselves. Later on in the video, John talks about this tattoo and he specifically says that he follows this artist because he loves to hate on their work. So I did look it up. Um, this artist's Instagram is at first Jing and he does not follow this artist. I don't know why he would say that. It just makes him, in my opinion, makes him sound bad to be following someone out of hate. Maybe it was a joke, I don't know. It's not funny to me. He really heavily critiques this tattoo and some of his points are valid in that he talks about how there's very light colors, so there's pinks and oranges and yellows all next to each other and there's not a lot of contrast there. And a tattoo artist that's been tattooing for 15 years really values contrast in tattoos and that's what they've been taught lasts over time. So I do understand his point, but I think he went a little far with critiquing this tattoo. He said, and I quote, this tattoo is disgusting, I hate it. This tattoo is not disgusting. I mean, it's really pretty. It's incredibly detailed. First Jing is a tattoo artist. I'm not sure exactly where they tattoo. It's either LA or New York. Specifically this tattoo, they mentioned that it is inspired by traditional Chinese paintings. And I think that they did an amazing job with the execution of this tattoo. And I think to say that it's disgusting is just like, it's wrong. <laughs> There are some more micro tattoos that John goes over in the video. Some of them he does somewhat like. His point isn't wrong in that in his experience, these tattoos may not hold up to the test of time because of the lack of contrast 
and the softness of the tattoo itself, the lack of outlines, things like that. But I think you can get that point across without belittling other artists' work, especially since this is such a newer art form and there's advancements in tattooing every single day. There's advancements in inks, there's advancements in the type of machines that people tattoo with. So the fact of the matter is that we don't have evidence of these tattoos healing over 10 years because it wasn't a huge style 10 years ago and they didn't have the equipment and the inks and things like that that they do today 10 years ago as well. So the fact of the matter is that John doesn't really know how these tattoos are gonna age over time. And to say that they're all gonna turn into blobs is a little misleading because truly there are micro tattoo artists that are doing things the right way and they're putting their healed work out there and I have some examples to show you guys. The first micro tattoo artist I'm gonna talk about is Pony Lawson. Pony is featured on Ink Magazine's channel all the time and he is pretty outspoken about how his tattoos do age well over time and that's because of the way he tattoos. Pony Lawson tattoos in a few different places. It seems like he tattoos in Chicago, New York City, and LA. He's also vegan, so his tattoo practices are vegan. And he is known for micro-realistic portraits. And these tattoos are not even three inches big. They are usually very, very small. He uses a lot of black, a lot of black outlines. And he has evidence of his tattoos aging really well over time. For instance, this Edward Scissorhands tattoo is really, really impressively aged two years later. And you can see how small it is. It doesn't even seem like it's more than two inches big, but that's really impressive healing for two years, especially for a tattoo so small. So you can see that he is doing micro tattooing in a way that works. So to say that all artists' micro tattoos are going to fail, it's a little too general and tattooing is advancing into these new tattoo styles. And I feel like some people are really set in the traditional ways. And I don't know that that is gonna be the case forever, that micro tattoos can't last. The next micro tattoo artist I wanna talk about is Seoul Tattoo. And they tattoo in Seoul, South Korea. Their artwork was not in the video, but as you can see, it's really similar to a lot of things that were featured in the video. They do very fine, delicate lines very light pastel colors, and they have an incredible amount of artistry and detail in their work. I wanted to point out this artist because they have a huge library of their healed tattoos over time. And Soul Tattoo has the longest healed tattoos I was able to find. So here we have this kitten tattoo, and this is healed four years. You can see that a lot of those lines are still really nicely put in there. It looks like a very small tattoo as well. Next we have this square image of, I think it's two children playing. And this one is healed three years old. And they even zoomed in on some of the edges to show how that has healed over time. You can see that there is a little bit of bleeding, but it's not significant at all. I don't know if these have been touched up, but they do look really good. So Sol is doing a great job. It just goes to show you that there's new techniques being used and you can't just put a blanket statement over micro tattoos that they're not gonna heal over time. John in his video is also assuming that these artists are not communicating this to their clients, that these tattoos heal differently and I think that that's just an assumption we can't make. I mean, you're not in any of these studios. So how do you know if they're not communicating that to their clients? Not surprisingly, there are quite a few artists that had a problem with this video by Inked Magazine with John Mesa. One of those artists is Joyce Wong and she tattoos in New York City. I think she tattoos at her own studio. I think she used to work at Bang Bang in New York City, but I'm not sure she's there anymore. To my knowledge, none of her tattoos were talked about in the video. If I'm wrong about that, please leave me a comment down below, but I couldn't find any that seemed to be hers but she does do these very delicate tattoos, so I can see why she felt the need to comment on this. So here's what she said. This might not be the highest quality screenshot. I actually wasn't able to find this anywhere online, but the YouTuber Treacle Tats made a reaction video to John Mesa's um, original video where she included this screenshot. So that's where I'm getting this screenshot from. I will also link her video down below. So let's go over Joyce's statement. She said, fuck it, I'm just gonna address the whack-ass video Inked Mag and John Mesa came out with. 
Number one, it's incredibly damaging to pose videos where people are reacting to tattoos and provoked to find fault. This video should never have been made at all. If it were approached as an educational video based on fact about the ways ink disperses over time, that's one thing. But to target artists who work in a different style because they work in a different country with different tattoo culture through the lens of an American traditional tattooing rules is not only ignorant, but hurtful. Tattooing did not originate in America. American tattooers have no right to dictate the rules by which everyone approaches the medium. I want to stop and talk about that point because I think it's really important and somehow it's a point that's like lost on a lot of people who are talking about this. The majority of micro tattooing is going on in Asian countries and I think that you have to take that into consideration when you're talking about micro tattooing. While micro tattooing didn't originate in Asia, it is really popular in Asia with Asian artists. And actually in my last video where I talked about fine line tattoos, some of you guys pointed out that it wasn't Mark Mahoney that originated the style and actually prisoners who were incarcerated originated fine line tattooing while in prison. So thanks for pointing that out. We can all learn together. But the point is that micro tattooing is hugely popular overseas in Asia. Tattooing is just not as accepted culturally overseas in Asia. And that's why these small, tiny little tattoos are so popular there. They're easier to hide, but they're also incredibly beautiful. And to completely discount that fact, I think, like Joyce said, is pretty ignorant. And it is hurtful to these artists, especially since we have evidence of them tattooing. I know some of John's comments were that a lot of these tattoos don't even seem real to him. And just because he can't do them doesn't mean that someone else can do them. I think to just say that it's all magic, it's all a show, it's fake, it's photography, it's Photoshop, is also really ignorant and just not the case, just because he's not skilled like they are. Joyce goes on to saying, this video perpetuates the notion that there's a finite amount of clients and a finite amount of money to be made in the tattoo industry. Guess what, John? You can hate on my work, but let's be clear about one thing. My clients don't go to you. We don't have clients in common. I'm not your competition. No one is cheating you or other traditional artists out of clientele. There's just more options out there for people now. I also think this is a really good point because as tattooing evolves, more people are gonna find styles that they like. And like she said, the same people going to a fine line or a micro tattoo artist is likely not gonna get traditionally tattooed. I personally like traditional tattoos. That's just what I have and what I like, but I don't see a problem with micro tattoos, fine line tattoos, single needle tattoos going on and people enjoying those tattoos. And while his concerns about the fading of inks and lower contrasts are valid, I think completely disregarding this newer style and completely disregarding all of the advancements in tattooing is missing the mark. Especially since John ends this Inked Magazine video and he specifically says, I'm not here to bash or trash anyone. That's a direct quote from him. I think that that is wrong. I think he completely bashed, completely trashed so many tattoos in this video. And I think he did it without a lot of basis and without a lot of education on this style. I think it's important to learn from traditional artists. They have a lot of good things that they do and they do those things because it's been tried and tested. There's no one that's disagreeing with that. I just think John went about this video in completely the wrong way. I feel like he tried to save himself with that ending comment, but for me, it didn't really do much. I think this was a really poorly done video and not a lot of education on the tattooers who were doing this style. Not a lot of education went into how they tattoo, where they tattoo, why they tattoo. And I think all of that's really important and for a tattoo artist to say that they're not. These artists aren't being respectful. I think that's really, really ironic because the one that's not being respectful in my opinion is John. Also, Inked Magazine has a pretty big role to play. I mean, they just showed him tattoos. I assume they didn't say who the artists were. And that's also really irresponsible on Inked Magazine's part. Especially since they work and they show micro tattoo artists on their Instagram, on their YouTube channel. It's just weird, in my opinion. The last part of Joyce's statement talks about John Mesa personally and how he has turned a blind eye to some behavior going on in his shops. I'm not super aware of any of those allegations, 
So I won't go into that in this video, but just know that that's there. You can pause it if you would like to read it. Overall, John does bring up some good points about pigments in ink and how they fade over time. But I don't think that that discounts micro tattoos, fine line tattoos, single needle tattoos at all. I think that everything is advancing and we should learn about these new techniques. I think these artists are doing the right things. They are tattooing on themselves. They, we can't assume that they're not telling their clients how these tattoos may or may not age. So I don't see a problem with these tattoos at all. I think that these people clearly show a huge amount of artistic ability and creativity. And I think that as people who love tattoos, we should encourage that exploration into those new styles. Now there's no shortage of micro tattoos and fine line tattoos that have not healed well over time. And I think that's also a good thing to bring up. But with any tattoo style, you can find some that are completely fallen out in a few years because the artist just wasn't doing their job. I don't think that that is only a micro tattoo problem. I think it might be a little bit harder when you're working with fine lines and micro tattoos, but that is not only a problem with fine line and micro tattoos. You can find a traditional artist that tattoos poorly and their ink will fall out just as fast. That's gonna be it for me today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about this whole debate. Let me know what you think about the style of tattoos. Would you get one, would you not? I think they're beautiful, even though I would not get one. I appreciate the art form and I think it's really, really beautiful. I love seeing them. I hope you guys can appreciate the art with me. So if you watched to the end of this video, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If you've made it to the end, leave me this emoji in the comments so I know you're a real one. Bye guys. I hope my audio quality is better in this video too. So if you've made it to the end and let me know how the audio quality is. I've done a lot of different things with my setup, so I would love to know what you guys think.